Hello everybody, and in today's video I want to talk about the Sonatec Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 docking station. Quite possibly one of the best and most versatile docking stations I have ever used. Watch the rest of this video to find out what makes this different, and why in my opinion this could be one of the best docking stations out there. Before we get into the specifics of the docking station, I want to clarify that this isn't a sponsored video and I bought and paid for this out of my own money. As I have used and tested several Sonatec products in the past and I was always really impressed with the results, I was intrigued when I heard about this particular device. I've been through several docking stations and expansion hubs lately and I almost gave up getting on one that had everything I wanted and performed to my expectations. When I saw this one, given my past experience with Sonatec, I took a chance and bought the Sonatec Echo 20 to use in my own setup. To set the stage, I run a multi-OS environment with multiple Mac and PC systems. My plan was to use this dock on my Mac Studio as a permanent part of my setup, and in addition, I wanted to simplify the number of connections going to the studio itself without giving up any performance. So let's go through the hardware and take this thing through its paces. The box and packaging are pretty basic. In the box you get the user's guide, the Thunderbolt cable lock to avoid pulling out the cable, a 0.7 meter Thunderbolt 4 cable, AC power cable, power supply, and the docking station itself. Looking at the front of the device you get an audio combo jack which I find extremely helpful, four full speed USB 3.2 ports, two of which are USB A and two of which are USB C, all capable of 10 gigs per second, and a UHS-2 SD card reader. Looking at the back of the unit, we have input power connector, HDMI 2.1 that supports 4K60, the Thunderbolt computer connector that supports up to 100 watts of power delivery, two Thunderbolt expansion connectors, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet jack, four more USB 3.2 ports, two of which are USB-A and two of which are USB-C, an RCA line out so that you can connect your speakers, and a microphone jack. To close out the hardware and arguably one of the more unique aspects of this dock is the built-in M.2 slot in the bottom of the unit. This is a PCI by one slot and is limited to around 800 megs a second of write speed, read and write speed, to allow full bandwidth to the other devices on the dock. But having this included is a real benefit and 800 megs a second isn't slow. And it's something that I haven't seen too many competitors have. From my perspective, looking around at all the competitors and having tried a few of these myself, this one offers me many more useful ports and features compared to others in this price range. Now that we've covered the basic hardware and ports, let's put some of these through some testing and see how they do. For testing, I'm going to test some of the devices that are in the docking station separately, but what I'm really after is to see if they maintain the performance when using multiple devices. Almost every docking station or expansion hub that I've ever used has slowed to varying degrees when multiple devices were being used. Especially high bandwidth devices such as external SSDs and 10 gig network card. I'm going to test some of the random combinations just to see how the dock is affected when other devices get pushed. The first thing I want to test is the external NVMe SSD which is the fastest external SSD I've ever used. Prior to this docking station, I've never been able to get full speed from this drive unless it was plugged in directly to my computer. The speed you are seeing here is the same that I achieved from the device when it's plugged directly in. For reference, it's a Samsung 980 Pro inside of an Acasis enclosure, which I've recently reviewed. As this is the highest bandwidth device I have, this will be the baseline to see how it's affected by other devices. Next, I took a quick benchmark of the NVMe drive that I put into the docking station itself. Per the documentation, this NVMe adapter is a PCI by one device, so it's limited to around 800 megs a second. And as you can see, it performed as advertised. So we can see how multiple devices play a role in performance. I want to hit both the external NVMe that's in an enclosure and the internal NVMe drive I put into the docking station at the same time to see if the performance is impacted in any way. As you can see from the benchmarking, both drives have not slowed up at all and they're benchmarking the same when they're run together as they did when they were run separately. The next test is the built-in 2.5 gigabit network adapter and the internal SSD at the same time. And once again, it's not missing a beat, and neither device is impacted by the other, with no noticeable change in performance. 
The network adapter is running at the same speed that I get when I'm testing a dedicated 2.5 gig adapter. For reasons I haven't found yet, my test setup has a faster upload than a download, but it's consistent for all the devices I test at 2.5 or 10 gig. In keeping with the same theme, this test is running the external NVMe enclosure with a much higher bandwidth and the 2.5 gigabit network at the same time. Once again, there's no obvious differences, even though I'm running a high bandwidth Thunderbolt device. This was the most surprising test as I'm pushing three separate devices to their limit without any impact to the performance of the other devices. For most users, this would really be an exception, but it's comforting to know that the device can handle it. Obviously, I have not tested every conceivable combination. However, what I have tested shows the power, flexibility, and design of this docking station. As I mentioned in the beginning, some of the other Thunderbolt docking stations I've tested didn't fare as well and slowed down considerably when running multiple devices. Just running the external SSD through many docking stations will inhibit the maximum performance of the SSD itself. The performance is what ultimately sold me on this dock, but as a bonus for me was the rear RCA jacks and the headphone jack in the front. This may not seem like much, but as I use audio engine speakers on my PCs, I found that RCA inputs on these speakers produce the best sound overall and eliminate most of the speaker popping that you get. As for the headphone jack, I just find it to be more convenient when it's in the front and easy access. All in all, I found this docking station to be everything that I wanted it to be, and it's working really well for me. I really like that all the USB ports are full 3.2 10 gig ports instead of the typical dock, which has a mixture of USB 2, 3, and 3.2 with many of them containing either no USB-C ports or just one. In my opinion, there aren't many out there that can compete with this device in this price range. It's one of the best docks I've ever used to date. I'll leave a link to this device in the comments below if you're interested in picking one up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.